All right, this is my 3D printer. Got everything loaded up. I got the uh, bed leveled. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start printing. Uh, this is the type of 3D printer you're going to need to print out this hydroponic tower. So I'll have everything you need to look for it and price it in the show notes below. Just click the link there. Um, but this particular model is at the time of this filming is $200 or less. So it's very affordable. It's got a big bed on it. And so uh, that's what we need to print out the first module. So, let's so here we go. three-way module so we're about 20 percent 18 percent into it a little bit longer ago can't wait need to print out about four or five of these plus the spacers and uh, can't wait to start growing There's the dispenser. This will be the part where the water comes up through and sprinkles down over the plants. Again, I rafted it uh, using the rafting technique so that the holes would be perfect. Alright, so there's the finished dispenser. Really good print there. Uh, really nice. So, that is the dispenser unit. Okay, let's take a closer look at it. Okay. Let's take a closer look. Let me uh, pose for the water to go from the pump up to this go through there and then disperse the water so everything looks good i'll sand up you know you usually have some of these stringers that we call in the 3d printing world uh it's a matter of really fine tuning your slicer and and the slicer is as i may have explained before is just the program that puts it into a g code so that you can put it into the 3d printer uh, on your us on your um, sd card and you can print. Uh, so the slicer is very important. You got to kind of dial in your settings, but 
I didn't do that on this one and that's why I've got stringers because I just I'm I'm into it for speed instead of beauty but that's the dispenser okay now I've got to do the uh, net pots and I'm gonna print three at a time and I'm using the rafting system where it lays down a bed I know it's gonna use a lot of plastic but it's gonna allow them to hear much better and for me to get a good print it's on your slicer that will allow you to you know the slang would be to make a raft for your 3d print to go on because sometimes a smaller print or a or a print that has a, a, a smaller footprint uh, those have a hard time sticking to the surface of your plate even even if you put glue and things like that down but if you select the rafting option in your slicer uh, then it will do something like this and then when it gets ready to print it lays it down on this white area which gives it a greater surface area to print so that's why the computers do or that's why the uh, 3d printer is doing this right now i've selected the rafting technique because i've got three of these net pots going at the same time so we'll come back when, when we're little okay now it'll retrace itself crossway and then it'll go over it one more time i'm always amazed by the just the preciseness look at that Look at that. That is amazing to me. Alright, and now here's close to the final layer of that raft. I know that takes a little time, but I tell you what, it almost guarantees you a good print because everything sticks well. And yes, I, you know, I, I spent an hour doing that, hour and 46 minutes, so almost two hours, but uh, I'm going to print out three net cups, and, uh, and that's going to ensure that they stick. Yes, I could try it without the uh, rafting, and I could print them one at a time, and, but, you know, it's going to be this long whether I print one or three so might as well just try, <coughs> try to knock them out overnight and get it. all right we should be about ready to close that gap just that big as soon as that happens I think it'll be ready to print my actual net pots I think this is getting ready to do it. Yep. So now it's going to start the, the pots. Okay, and there's the finished product. So uh, I'm going to have to get these unstuck. There they go. So not a bad print. And there's our net pots. That's Okay, and at last there's the finished product. After all that printing, we're left with this. Now some of the uh uh, some of the uh, cups are down in my basement being seeded. I have seeds in them, so they're underneath the lights germinating. So, uh, uh, so that I can start the seed production and turning the thing on. So, um, give you a look at what it looks like inside. I went ahead and printed out the steam bre stream breaker. So let's turn this thing on 
and we'll see how how it looks okay I'm gonna plug it in okay now I have it plugged in and you'll see the water hits each of the net pots and that's what waters the seeds sorry about some of my bad 3d prints there I just didn't clean it off good enough and that's what it looks like on the inside the stream breaker kind of breaks up the stream from going too high you see the motor um, I'll put in the show notes a link to this motor but it's made for hydroponics it has a, a 15 foot head and it, it's really powerful I'm gonna have to turn it down to zero probably but I had this one and I will link in show notes below where you can get it this tube is described below uh, they're, they're sold in 20 foot sections uh, so it's very affordable uh, but this isn't the best setup in the world but I wanted to bring these out here so I could show them to you uh, I've used my aquaponics um, thing that I have in my basement to grow lights uh, if you want more information on that uh, you can look at my other videos on how I built my basement aquaponics but um, I've got I printed out uh, this tray holder and um, then the net pot stick in it so I'm I've got to wait until the roots come down through the rock wool that I have right there and uh, then I'll start placing my plants in but uh, just placing them generally under lights or on a window ledge or or, or uh, somewhere in sunlight uh, usually will work well the nutrient solution we're gonna do uh, what everybody on the internet and everybody on YouTube's been using and the results have been spectacular for the nutrient solution it's master blend 41838 then you mix in Epsom salt and you have to do it in this order first the master blend two tablespoons of master blend one tablespoon of Epsom salt then you mix in your calcium nitrate 15.500. So this is the formula that works the best for all kinds of, it says tomato and vegetables on there, but also uh, people have been having great results uh, on um, with their lettuces. So we're gonna try it for this, for the tower, and we're gonna see how it goes. I'm gonna mix all this in one gallon so two tablespoons of master blend one tablespoon of epsom salt two tablespoons of calcium nitrate mix it in this which is one gallon then i have four gallons already in there and we're just going to mix it all together so that we have a five gallon blend so i'm going to do that off camera and then we're going to load the nutrient solution into the hydroponic tower loaded everything up got some small plants in there we're just going to see as an experiment how many days it'll take to get these to grow got my timer dialed in working so i believe i'm going to leave it right here and i'm going to come back in part two and update you so be looking for part two and we'll update the growth